Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'd like to talk a little bit about the effects of war on the social fabric of America. Um, what really happens when our young people go to war and what happens to them after they've been to war? That's the topic and that's the subject. First, I'd like to mention that recruitment of young people in America is for the military is a very selective process. It typically happens with young people who have uh, not high prospects because of the social situation in which they find themselves, or it can happen amongst young people who have a hard time with their, their natal families or don't get enough support from their emotional support from their native natal families. So it's usually a question of economics or psychology uh, of, of a lack of something that draws young people into the military. Um, and so what, they what do they find there in the military? They find a chance to identify with people, to feel that a group of people care about them, and they are willing to risk their lives in order to have that feeling. I've talked in the past about um, audiovisual clips they get stuck to our etheric template I the nature of this universe is love and light and joy and the nature of our physical bodies our etheric template our emotional mental body and our body of light each of these is composed of love, light, and joy. Our experience in the third dimension, however, contains some distortions of the light that allow us to experience scenes uh, that are relatively untrue and one of the least true scenes that we can experience most divorced from the warp and woof of time and space and true reality. Most untrue is the experience of war. Okay. When we experience things that are very different from the true nature of things, our souls are wounded by this. Our souls retain a, a memory. Our bodies, when we're embodied, attain a, retain a cellular memory. What I call a short clip, a short video, an audio-visual clip um, of this distortion of light. Okay. Amongst ghosts, those that, that have a hard time remembering to turn to the light, to turn to their, their guardians and, retur and return in their soul journey to wherever they may need to be, the reason for this like stuckness of the spirit after death is, according to Jeffrey Allen, whom I trust very much, as a spiritual counselor. The reason is uh, um, that there's like an audiovisual clip stuck right in front of their astral eyes or whatever part is, their ghostly eyes, that plays like a tape loop over and over again, a scene of horror. And it takes one of us, who are clear, to wake them up a little bit and say, 
Say, did you know you passed on? You could turn to your guardians now and see what, what's, what's up, what you could do next. And so then they distract themselves, pull themselves back a little from that false reality and begin to realize that they have many options. Okay. So this idea of the audiovisual clip that, that hasn't been cleared and isn't true carries over to scenes of war. When our young people experience the horrors of war, the audiovisual clips of these atrocities become stuck to them, stuck to their, their cellular memory. Kind of like when a little child ventures off into a meadow and comes back home with little cockaburs, little seeds stuck all over its clothing that are hard to get off. This is like the memories of war. So what happens then? Well, in psychological terms, what happens is called post-traumatic stress disorder. And that can, that can be uh, a kind of a nightmare awareness of reality that continues to play in the minds and spirits of our young people all their lives. But there's another way of looking at this whole thing. And that's through the lens of demonic awareness and diabolical intent. Before you turn off your video, and in defense of this point of view, and the worthwhileness of considering this point of view, I'd like to mention that awareness of the demonic realm and of demonization of the human spirit is one of the um, basic tenets of Christianity and of, spoken of quite frequently in the Bible and also in the sacred texts of India, in Hinduism, and in Buddhism. You'll find reference to demons and, and devils. In modern America, we tend to downplay all this because of the advent of science, okay? which is yet another filter that cuts down on the truth uh, the total truth of reality. In fact, in the fourth dimension, which we're all experiencing right now and becoming aware of, there are such things as demonic entities. And these entities mm, derive their sustenance from human anguish. What really happens when people go to war? Do they kill each other? Do they win something from that? Does one side win over the other side? Or is it in fact the demonic influence on the third dimension and through the fourth dimension that causes war, that causes humankind to turn one against the other, when in fact we are all friends? If I were to look through the lens of this awareness, fourth dimensional awareness, at a scene of battle, what would I really see? I would see beings of darkness descending on the brilliance of the human soul and tearing soul wounding in the people who are fighting, both those who are, killing, who are killing and those who are being killed. I would see these young people returning from war with greater soul wounding than they had on entering it. And I would see, I would know that they would have a greater tendency to turn to those behavioral qualities that would increase the demonic influence on them. What are those qualities? Well, I looked this up in uh, Christian texts, and I agree with two of them for sure. One is practice of the black arts. 
Did you know that amongst our, our military and amongst our, our um, veterans that, that paganism is on the rise? Now, paganism itself is not, is not a bad thing, but paganism with the practice of black magic is a bad thing. And the intention there is to, to regain a sense of power which is not a bad thing, but the problem is that it's power over other people and damage to other people. Okay. So, so when we turn to the minute we turn to the black arts, the minute we think a curse, even I, those of us that are clairaudient can actually hear the the influx of demons into the soul field of the person that so that so behaves immediately. There is no delay, okay? So that's the one thing. That's the one thing that war causes is, is moving into the black arts, moving into, say, power over other people, moving into disenfranchisement of those we feel to be powerless. Vigilante activity taking the law into our own hands. Injury to children, it might be sexual abuse, might even be killing. Spousal abuse, physical injury to our family. Viewing other people with, with different points of view from our own, or with different choices of lifestyle from ourselves, or with less money than us, as not actually being people. We might even think they're the riffraff of the world that we have a, have a right to, to eliminate from the social fabric. This is a direct consequence of the war mentality the demonic influence that's exerted through the war mentality. It's not, it's not people that are doing it. All right, on to the topic of drugs. Drugs are the other main thing, the other main gateway or inroad that, it, that the demonic world uses to further wound the human soul. And I think you would find, you'd have to look it up, but I think you would find that amongst veterans of wars, um, there's greater drug use than with the general population. And the reason I would think this to be true is that the trauma of war that they carry is so um, at odds with the nature of all that is that it would be hard not to want to use drugs to forget about the soul wounding, the post-traumatic stress disorder. Again from the clairaudient realm. <laughs> this is a long one. This is my longest so far. Bear with me. Again from the clairaudient realm, I know that the moment that a person turns to drugs, demons descend upon them. I can hear it happening amongst the very good people. of the, There are no people that are not of love and light, that are not wonderful souls, that are not huge hearts, that are not the most incredible energy in the entire universe. But the minute that they turn, choose lack of awareness, over-awareness through drugs, then that is the, the key that the demons need. You know what I mean? It's the key. So, I'd like to make a case in this roundabout way for the possibility that war is not of human origin, that humans are all one true and eternal race of souls, that we will have no part of injury to, fe to our fellow humans. And in so doing, our soul wounding will be knit up and the family of humanity will once more shine forth in the universe. <laughs>